everybody, welcome to Web Workout 101. I'm Debbie Campbell. Today we're gonna to be cooking with one of Mother Nature's superstars. This is quinoa. It's spelled Q-U-I-N-O-A, and you can find it in most grocery stores now. If you're lucky enough to have a grocery store that has bin sections, it's a lot less expensive to buy it that way, but you also can find it in boxes. It can replace rice, in just about any dish. You can use it in salads and soups. It's great for people from different cultures. I have a lot of clients that have had a really hard time giving up white rice. This would be a great substitution. It's full of fiber and it has more protein in it than any other grain. So for those of you that are vegans or vegetarians, this is a great way to get your protein in. It's full of amino acids, complete protein, full of other nutrients. It cooks almost exactly the same way rice does. So what we're gonna do with the quinoa today is we're gonna roast some vegetables. I'm gonna show you how I roast vegetables quick and easy. And then we're gonna mix it with the quinoa. And then I'm gonna have it hot for lunch and put it in my refrigerator. I might have it tomorrow or the next day for lunch cold. It's great, it's so versatile. Okay, so let me show you what we're gonna to need today. First thing you're gonna need is one cup of quinoa. Now, so for one cup of quinoa, I would cook it in two cups of water. I do just a little bit less water because I like my quinoa just a little bit dry. I've got, um, this is a whole, I guess it would be bushel of asparagus that I got from the grocery store. We're gonna roast this. I need one clove of garlic. This is half of a white onion cut. I took one small eggplant and I have already dried that out, layered it, put paper towels on it, got some of the liquid out of it so that it's not, it doesn't have that bitter flavor. And then I have a whole container of cherry tomatoes. Now I might not even use all of this in this particular recipe, but what I'll do is I'll store it in the refrigerator for a salad or something. You're gonna need olive oil, one plastic Ziploc bag, it doesn't really matter what size, that's gonna help us roast salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use some garlic salt for my roasting. Now, if I had the time and the energy, I would go ahead and use more garlic, but we're gonna take a couple shortcuts. Shortcuts, excuse me. I have my oven preheated to 425 degrees. I've got a couple of pans out for my roasting, and a pan out for my quinoa, and then a pan that I'm gonna mix everything together in, okay? So let's get it on. First thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna get the roasting going. So what I wanna do is take my Ziploc bag. So easy, so easy. Roasting the vegetables just gives them a real sweetness. So um, I could eat asparagus raw, but it tastes so much sweeter when you roast it. Okay, so we're gonna put a little garlic salt in here, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of garlic salt. Kind of put it in according to how you like it. My daughter would probably put a ton of garlic salt in here. She loves garlic salt. Okay, then some extra virgin olive oil. Just a little bit, because we don't want to put too much olive oil on there, because then we're just gonna, I mean, olive oil is great for you, but you don't want to load it up with calories. So then I'm gonna take my asparagus, put it in there, seal my bag. There we go, and then I'm just gonna Mix it up, try and make sure that every little spear of asparagus, asparagus is a great food. Gets just at least a little bit of, get that salt and pepper out of the bottom. There we go. A little bit of olive oil on it. Simple as that, done, okay? Now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna place it on my little pan I've got back here, because it's gonna take the asparagus a little bit longer to cook then the other two things I'm cooking today, eggplant and um, tomatoes. Couldn't think there for a second. So this is gonna go in the oven, already heated, preheated oven. So this is gonna take 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, now we're gonna do our tomatoes and our eggplant. So my tomatoes can go in the same bag, simple as that. Still got some olive oil in there. Some of the air out and mix everything up again. Oh, these are so yummy. I think the smaller the tomatoes that you can find, the better this is. If you sat them in the oven for, um, you know, an hour or so, you get those tiny, tiny, almost like little raisins. I still like them with a little more juice to them. Okay, how easy was that? Now I'm gonna put this on my other pan. 
and I'm going to steer it towards one side of the pan because I'm going to put the eggplant on the other. Perfect. Now eggplant does need more olive oil, so I'm going to add a little bit more here. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. And a little bit more garlic salt. Garlic salt. Okay, and all these vegetables are full of vitamins and minerals. Fiber. Remember, we got to get that fiber in. Remember how important nature's broom is. Okay. Now nobody else in my house likes eggplant, so I will eat all this. <clears throat> and you can put whatever you want in here. I put sweet potatoes in here, roasted sweet potatoes. So good. My husband prefers it with just mushrooms and onions, the quinoa. Now when the quinoa, when we start cooking the quinoa, actually, you can just eat it right off of the stove top, just like a rice. Try and get a little bit more olive oil mixed on these. Eggplant just brings up that oil. Okay, we're good. We're good. So this is going to take up the other half of my pan. I'm going to spread these out a little. So these are going to take less time, about 10 to 15 minutes. <clears throat> I'm actually come in, going to come in at about halfway. and turn the eggplant over. All right, so let's put this right there. Ooh, that asparagus already smells good. All right, so now I'm gonna get my quinoa started. So I've got my water here. Get my fire started. Oopsie, wrong one. Perfect. And we're gonna bring that to a boil. So I'm gonna add some salt. go. And then while I'm waiting for that to come to a boil, I'm going to go ahead and start my onions. You know, I've only lived in this house for I don't know how many years and I still don't know <laughs> which thing works which. So got to put a little olive oil in here. But if you look in real close here, you can see those little white ringlets. Once you see those little white ringlets, you know that you're done. Okay. So my Quinoa is cooked perfectly. I've got my roasted tomatoes. Oh, they look so good. My roasted eggplant. And I cut my roasted eggplant and my roasted asparagus up just a little bit more so it's not overwhelming the flavor of the quinoa. So I've got my onions and my garlic. I'm going to reheat this pan or heat this pan up again. Put it back up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add in the ingredients again. Mix everything up. Ooh, it's gonna be yummy. Now I like all this stuff so much, I'm going ahead and throwing it all in there. You don't have to throw everything in. And then I'm gonna take my quinoa and just toss that in there. So obviously this would be a great side dish for a big family dinner. I will eat this over the span of a few days. Okay, so we're gonna blend all that together. We're almost done. So remember the quinoa is loaded with protein, fiber, amino acids. All the rest of your vegetables in here have lycopene, all kinds of other nutrients in there. The other great thing about quinoa is it's highly anti-inflammatory. So remember, inflammation is the body's en enemy and quinoa helps combat inflammation. For those of you that have arthritis, that are on a special diet, if you have any kind of, you know, inflammation is bad for your skin too. So, so highly anti-inflammatory and it's also um, on the glycemic index, it ranks pretty low. So when it goes into your system, it digests nice and slow so you don't get that buzz that sometimes you can get off of white rice. Now, okay, are you kidding me? Does that look pretty or what? All right.